Now I um, get the opportunity to uh, introduce the person who's going to help you to meet our keynote speaker today. And I'm really excited to have him. I just want to say that through a lot of the work that I do uh, for PEAK around um, self-advocacy and leadership for young people with disabilities, I am just, um, it's very, very important to listen and to learn, as we all know, and to, and to learn with our young people with disabilities to help them to become empowered, but then also to become empowered ourselves, I think. So anyway, I want to introduce Teresa Baldry, who is going to introduce our keynote speaker, and, and she does happen to be related to him. This one out, maybe. <laughs> then we'll know if we had a sound check done on this. I'm Teresa Baldry. Um, I'm Isaac Baldry's traveling companion for this trip. I work for Pluck Parents Let's Unite for Kids in Montana. Um, Isaac is a very interesting young man. He is 20 years of age. I don't think that's in your speech. Started speaking as a global messenger for Special Olympics on a, um, just could you please read the oath for us? And Isaac couldn't leave that alone. So just started to do some public speaking more outside of Special Olympics. Um, and Peak has been gracious enough, gracious enough to support that. So, so thank you very much. Um, he is a huge sports fanatic that's going to ring through things. And I'm just going to let you do your sound test with Roger. And you got everything else covered, buddy. Hey, I can go ahead and do the sound. Make some noise. Sound test. I don't hear it. Okay, okay. so that means That's we're going to do backup. this way. So this is coming. Mm -hmm. out. Yeah. And so I'm going to be your grip. <laughs> yeah, do it again. Let's just make sure everybody can hear. Sound test. Better? Is it good? Try again, good. bud. Sound test. So okay. I need to point. Oh, there he is. There you are, Isaac, like bigger than life. OK, so go ahead and open your notebook. speak with you. My name is Isaac Baldry. I live in Miles City, Montana. I graduated from Custer County District High School in... We moved there when I was a baby, but before I was diagnosed with cerebral. A lot of people know me. Sorry, we're having technical difficulties, as usual. What I didn't tell you is this device is on its last leg, literally. So we're hoping it will limp through. So let's try its memory is having problems, mm. Isaac. <laughs> I know, wouldn't you know it? I'll, t I'll talk a little bit, I'll fill. Okay. How's that? Roger, just fill is that good? Good, okay. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my experience. I actually, when did we first start working together? That's in here, but Isaac was two and a half. Two and a half, okay. So in my previous life, before I became an involuntary executive director, <laughs> was, <laughs> 
was working with lots and lots of kids uh, dealing with uh, technology issues. So Isaac was, uh, well, Teresa actually was the real challenge. Isaac was pretty easy. <laughs> and uh, they just needed tools to be able to do whatever it is that Isaac needed to do in school because he couldn't, you know, do things in the regular way. So uh, are you ready? We're going to see if this works now. Try it. Now it's being totally important. Do you want to just restart? Do you need to restart? OK, just do a restart. Isaac, remember how being on his last leg was coming soon? Yeah. <laughs> well, you said it was on its, on its last leg the last time he spoke in front of, I don't know how many people there were. They, uh, Isaac is in transition between, you know, this old tech, um, which is, you know, very expensive, you know, medically based, <laughs> and uh, he's moving into the iPad, and that was what he was going to demonstrate, but because he's been using, you know, this old tech for his speeches, he's got all of his speeches in there, so he, you know, adjusts them and edits them on this device, he hasn't transitioned to the new stuff. So, do you think this might be the last time you do it on this? I don't know. He's got it. The nice thing is, Isaac's a Plan B kind of guy. And you got it over there. He has a Plan B. It yeah. just dies because. Yeah. Do your usual thing to it. Okay. When are you, are you, are you going to try it once more before we go to Plan B? Come on, baby. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Plan B? Well, be quick. Okay. Try one more thing, Raj. Okay, he's going to do one more thing. You want to plug it in? Still in the blank speech. <laughs> okay. We'll come up with our own. <laughs> well, it did the sound test, okay, and now it just clicks it. Yeah. I'm going to try to directly link it to power. Hang on. And the other thing I, I can know. do is sometimes I flick its brain. Okay. Can you get the pin out flick its brain? There actually is a little reset button, button in it, and so when it freezes during the speech, I literally go in and touch its little brain. <laughs> 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 so. Okay. Let's try this sentence by sentence again. Good luck. Go for it. I'm gonna, go ahead. I have confidence in it. Good morning. Keep going. One more time. First, thank you for inviting me to speak with you. My name is Isaac Baldry. I live in Miles City, Montana. I graduated from Custer County District High School in We Moved There when I was a baby, but before I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. I'll just fill in the blanks. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of people know me. They greet. They greet me. It's cutting out each word, last word. I go to the grocery store with Mom. <laughs> On Sundays, there is church, and the people I talk to there. Sports are big in my community. That works out good for me, because I like to go to whatever the game. I like to be around. Okay, because I'm going to do a lot of fill in the blank. This is, this is just working on the fly, buddy. Uh, people. I guess you could say I am a people person. That one worked. <laughs> Just keep flying, buddy, because you had a long speech. <laughs> Maybe it comes from being part of a big family. <laughs> we have to have fun, you know? Come on, buddy. We, Bron, when I die, decided I would talk about advocacy, leadership, and assistive technology. 
<laughs> I know. I'm just going to kill you before we get through this. Okay, go ahead, bud. So, how did my device do? Saying her name. <laughs> okay, go ahead. You get the others here. Bronwyn. Do that again. Bronwyn. Oh, we need to turn that up. It is turned all the way up. Go ahead. Bronwyn. Okay, so they all worked pretty good, buddy. Bronwyn. Wow. Okay, go ahead. That's a tough one too. Here it is on other. Tools. I brought several pieces of my... Technology. This wasn't really different from other two-year-olds. They also okay, are trying to. So we're going to have to go to plan B. Yeah. Do you have faith that I can launch plan B? <laughs> <laughs> that really wasn't what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Do we try the sound? Plug it. Plug the sound. Okay. There it is, right behind you. Right so. there. We may to turn it down now a little bit. Oh, put it over there. Cool. We could plug this into the LCD if we want. No. Good. Okay. So. Make sure we got sound first. Okay. You got the volume? Yeah. So this is what you didn't want to do, but you're gonna have to do. So. Whenever you, I'll scoop this one back because this thing is toast. Pizzarama. We overloaded its brain. Uh, I knew it. So, we're going to bring these two forward, and you are set to go whenever you want to go, buddy. Well, we, yeah, go ahead, bud. That's for later. Montana. I graduated from Custer County District High School in 2010. Miles City is a small town in eastern Montana, about 8,000 people. I have lived there most of my life. We moved there when I was a baby, but before I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Small towns are nice. Everybody knows you. I like to go places in my community. A lot of people know me. They greet me. We look forward to seeing each other. I like to see people, and they tell me they like to see me. I try and go somewhere every day. I go to the grocery store with mom. She shops, and I visit. I have people I like to joke around with there. Some people I just say hi to. We have a couple other stores we can go to. It seems like we are always out of something, so I have an excuse for my outing. On Sundays there is church and the people I talk to there. Sports are big in my community. That works out good for me, because I like to go to whatever the game is. It also helps that I have four brothers and one sister who all play sports. Every week there are a couple games to go to. I like to be around people. That is the worst part about winter, when it is too cold to go out. I still try to go out every couple days. I get crabby if I stay home. I guess you could say I'm a people person. Maybe it comes from being part of a big family. So if you are going to be a people person, you have to speak to people. For me that meant people had to accept all the ways I communicate. It also meant I needed ways to get out what I wanted to say. That brings me to what my keynote today is supposed to be about. We, Bronwyn and I, decided I would talk about advocacy, leadership, and assistive technology. For me, all three of these come back to communication, and how important communication is. So how did my device do saying her name? Here it is on other tools. I find it interesting how my devices say uncommon words. Okay, I'll stop playing. I brought several pieces of my technology. I wanted you to see there is more than one way for technology to help people communicate. 
I will try while I'm speaking with you to use the different tools occasionally. We try. Lastly, please remember I do not always use a tool to communicate with people who are familiar to me. I can often use signs and gestures. I think it is important that however a person shares their thoughts, wants and choices, it is important to value it as communication. I think I will go back to the beginning of communication for me. It is where advocacy, leadership, and assistive technology became part of my life. When I was little, probably about two, people who spent time with me knew I had thoughts I wanted to share. This wasn't really different from other two-year-olds. They also are trying to communicate. My facial expressions, sounds, and gestures were how I let people know what I wanted. Because people say they could see in my eyes so much more I wanted to get out, I was shown my first computer at about two and a half. I have never been without a computer since. I started to create signs for words I used often. My speech pathologist and family thought I had too many signs that looked similar. I needed more, so I could express all of what I wanted to communicate. We moved my signs to look more like American Sign Language, so when I started school people would know what I was saying. Because it is difficult for me to move my hands my language was again limited. We also found, when I started school, I wanted to participate in group communication activities. It wasn't okay with me for someone else to interpret what I was saying. I would get frustrated when they did not say what I was trying to communicate. For show and tell I did not like to hold and show while someone else did the speaking. I wanted to do the speaking and someone else could hold and show. We started with IntelliKey's program with buttons to say what I wanted to share. Whatever we did, I always wanted more. I knew I could do what the other kids were doing. I just needed a way to do it. By first grade I had my first communication device. It started as my tool for speaking. It was hard. I had to know what three pictures made every word I wanted to say. When I did start to find the words and use them, school changed what they wanted me to do. They felt if I could speak, I could use this tool to read and write. By the time I was in fourth grade, I was using the device more for reading and writing than communicating. I hated my communication device. It was how I did all my schoolwork. I did not like to use it at all to speak to people. I decided to quit using the device altogether. Because my communication device was mine from home, I just decided to stop taking it to school. People at school were not happy with me, but I was frustrated with how difficult everything had become. People had to think of new ways I could show what I knew. People started thinking more about what I needed to do, what the task was, than just how I said the answer. I have had several devices over the years from the same company. They have made improvements to make it easier to access language, find what you want to say. I still have always thought they are a barrier to speaking with people. First augmented communication devices are big. The ones I have had, I have to attach to my chair, so that I can carry it. Then you have to move it off to the side, to drive up to a table or desk. When I'm just in a group, it is this big box between me and someone else. The other piece, is getting people to wait, while you find all the words for the sentence you want to say. At this point, I choose to use my ego as a tool for work. That's what it is the easiest one, to use to give a speech. I can control how fast I speak. It allows me to say what I want to share in a notebook, and then speak one sentence at a time. When I'm writing a speech, I use the eco and win on my computer to create sentences. I like the word prediction on win and sometimes I just know where the word is on the eco. I use whichever tool is fastest. No matter what the technology is, I have always wanted it to work fast. Because the size of communication devices has always bugged me, I bought a not the touch and a communication app. I started to learn more about how I could use the app to communicate. I like having something small I can carry with me. I bought a lanyard that plugged into the iPad so I could wear it around my neck and small speakers to increase sound. 
The problem was it was hard to hold steady on my lap and the buttons were kind of small to touch. I liked my communication software on the iPad. It was bigger and easier to see and touch. Two problems, one is mom's, and she keeps reminding me. <laughs> Second, she needs a better case, hers is Hopley. I'm trying to get my own, and it will be better than hers. I want to have something small to carry with me. I like that the iPod is quick to use. Remember I have a need for speed. This applies to skiing and wheelchair races also, but I'm getting off track. There are two apps I'm currently using and liking for community. Okay. Um, maybe we want to switch the camera to the iPad. Uh, yes, sir. Well, I know you have that in there somewhere, but I don't know where. <laughs> it's just totally shutting itself down now. Isn't yeah, it? just let it die. Get it out of your way, boss. Whoops, Whoa. maybe not. <laughs> Here we gotta just go like this. I know, the cheap help you get. Okay. Okay, okay sorry. Can we be able to touch those there? I'm gonna turn it a little bit. Yeah, just put it where it's most comfortable. Okay. Because I know going back and forth mm. is going to be a little hard here. The other way was easier because you could stop it. So mm. I have to. No, no, no. I'm not doing this one. I'll only help you stop it. So go ahead and go here. Communication on the iPad. Hopefully, oh, Roger can help me show you what they look like on the iPad. <laughs> one is Prolico 2 Go, and the other is Predictable. There is one more out there I want to try, but it is almost $300. So before I spend the money, I would like to know if it is going to do more for me than one I'm currently using. It is called Touch Chat and the language and pictures are similar to what I'm used to on the Eco. The hard part is the demo version has no sound. It is hard to tell what it would be like for communication when you cannot hear it speak. The demo also does not allow you to edit for customization. So it is hard to tell how difficult it is to program what you want to say. Getting back to the ones I'm using. I like each one for different reasons. It was a little over a year ago when I learned about P2Go, and that is why I bought the iPad Touch. I'm using Prologo 2 go for quick communication. I can... Okay, so now you could show them a little bit about that one. Sound. Oh, um, here we go. Sorry, Brian. Oh, you're okay. Just put it right by. I, are there speakers yeah, down I here? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Close enough. About me. Mm -hmm. Yep, whatever Elfin. you want to do, boss. Yes. That's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. I like the Montana Grizzlies. I am a huge Grizz fan. Mm. Whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. You're going to go to chat spaces and show them some of those. So back. I am 20 years old. Chat spaces. Would that help? Yeah, oh, that's I'm not the best position. That's best. Go ahead. Restaurant chat. I would like a table for eight. Remember, he has a big family. <laughs> <laughs> but he can say less if, if we happen to get to sleep away, slip away. Go ahead and go back. Okay. So you want to go back to this one now? Quickly program sentences I would want to say. I can keep them stored in categories, so it is easy for me to find the man who used them. People don't have to wait while I create a sentence. I'm adding to what I have based on what I may need in a particular setting. We talk about what I might want to say and then program the sentences to be ready to go. I can also link what I create to vocabulary that is already in the program. It does bug me that things are alphabetized. I cannot move them to order of use. In other words, if I use something a lot, I would list it first. I do like that there is a lot of words and choices. I'm just starting to use one called predictable. I'm used to using word prediction to write. 
It uses the word prediction to speak. Mm -hmm. Predictable is really... Okay, go ahead and watch that one. That? Yep, he's got that one ready to go too. So how did you get this? How do we get predictable? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> Where's your mic? Oh, because I really need a mic. Um, <laughs> predictable, Roger got the iPad because I was going to do a presentation at CEC in April on apps because it's become something that I'm a little bit obsessed about and that sometimes is a good thing to feed and sometimes not. At this point, Roger's thinking, it's a good thing to feed. Just let her go and play with this. So, but he did give me a budget. Don't buy any app over $10 and if you're going to, talk to me about it first. Well, we had her local to go because Isaac had purchased it and I linked the two devices to the same iTunes account so that I could put her local to go on the iPad because as far as I'm concerned, testing it out, he can do it way better than I can. Um, but there was one out there called Predictable that we'd heard about. So I sent him an email stating that I'd be presenting at CEC and really wanted to demonstrate their product. Would they please consider donating one to Pluck, Parents Let's Unite for Kids? In a few days, I had the code to be able to download it for free, which is really nice because this is a $189 app. Um, Proloquo to go is um, right around the same cost. And the, the other one he wants, Touch Chat, um, we may just send them an email too because the demo version is 10 bucks. We were hoping it would show us something and it's the $10 version is not worth messing with. Messing with. But back to you, Isaac. So you can show them I'm predictable. What did you want to show? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what you wanted to show. Mm. Yep, do, do whatever you want, bud. So you got two letters out and it gave him the word already. No screens. Go ahead. I was going to just lift it up so you can see your screen better. In. Nice try. you got to get another letter. Mm. <laughs> I know you want word prediction to work on the first one. Go ahead. E. Uh, N. <laughs> Is it there now? Now, why did you want to show them that? What can you do now? Mm -hmm. Speaking in Denver. And what else? What else were you going to do so the people know what you're doing? I'll let him tell you. Oh but go ahead, my Isaac. God. I didn't know go ahead and do this. Oh yeah, he figured this stuff out. Go ahead, boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who's always thinking? <laughs> Not me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, boss. Fast in learning what words you use together. I like that I can hear the word before I choose it for my sentence. I can easily add something I write or spell to my phrases. I think it is really cool. I can update my Facebook status right from the app. I can also quickly email what I have written. I think they need to fix it so you can text message from the app. I would like that. I know. Now I use it to create the text message I want and then have to type the same message letter by letter into my phone. Too slow. I don't like that I have to remember to hit speak to hear what I have written. I also have to remember to clear the first sentence before I speak another, or it says the whole screen. I would like those buttons a little bigger. Altogether, I like how fast it is to use. My plans for the future would be to do everything my computer does for me on the iPad. I could easily grab my iPad and go. I may even try a mount if it does not get in the way. I also want to have mine access the internet all the time, like on a cell phone. Mom's doesn't, but she has an old one. I have been talking a lot about the assistive technology I use. I use so much assistive technology every day. I don't think about doing things without adaptations. 
Even the door in and out of my house has a rope tied to the outside of the door, so it is easier for me to close it alone. That brings me back to the disadvantage of living in a small town. When I was younger, I was never around anyone who used technology like I did. It was sixth grade, before I had a classmate who used a wheelchair like I did. He didn't stay for the whole year. Even though he used a power wheelchair, he did not use any other technology. He didn't need it. It wasn't until I went to an augmentative communication camp in Wisconsin before I saw anyone who spoke like I did. I was already a teenager by that time. When I was in school, how I needed to do things was so different. It was hard for teachers. I had some really good teachers who made me part of the class, but that didn't happen often in grade school. By the time I got to junior high everyone accepted I needed a computer to do my work. But it was not until I was a junior in high school that the school bought me a computer to use. It had always been my personal technology that I brought to school and used. That made it hard because we were always having to teach new people about what I used and what they needed to do for me to have access to materials in school. Mom would come and train those working with me. She also was the one to call when things didn't work. I tried school technology people, but they did not know assistive technology. I would get frustrated with them and just tell them not to touch my stuff. I would call mom and she could fix the technology. I think this is a good time to talk about Kevin. I met Kevin at the beginning of my senior year. There was all this talk about a new kid who used a wheelchair. I was not going to be the only one in my high school. When he showed up at school I was surprised. He was in a push wheelchair and it did not fit him well. He was slumped down in the chair and his legs were pushed underneath. I couldn't imagine sitting like that. I was a surprise to him also. He had not seen a power chair like mine. I could sit comfortably in my chair and I could drive myself. It was not long and he was telling people he wanted a power chair like mine. He could not speak, but he pointed to my chair a lot and then back to himself. We knew what he wanted. Then he saw how I did things in school with my computer and communication device. He had never seen tools like that. I didn't know people just did not always have the tools they needed. I did not know how lucky I was to have always had technology. It had been with me every day before I even started school. I could not imagine not having ever seen assistive technology before. Teachers showed him what tools the district owned. They gave him a keyboard that he could type on and take with him to classes. It could not speak. Someone donated a power chair to him, but it needed work and to be adjusted to fit him. Within a couple months he was gone. I think of him and wonder how he is doing. Now that I'm out of high school sometimes I go with my mom to show people the technology I use. I'm surprised when I meet people who cannot speak but do not have assistive technology to help them. I do not understand why more people do not have tools that would help them. I don't think we value their communication or what they could do. I think everyone should be given the chance to use assistive technology. It should not matter where they live. That's okay, you stopped it quick. You're going to launch the other one? <laughs> Isaac had actually set part of this speech up to run on Win so that you could hear and see how Win worked. So he has to switch gears to C, I think, isn't it? Wow. Nope, it's just, this, just within this device is all he's okay. switching. So we don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Isaac's got it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> The last piece of technology I wanted to talk to you a little about is something I use every day, Win. Win, what you need now, is software I have installed on my laptop. Like a lot of people, after breakfast, I like to sit down and read the paper. It gets my brain going. For me, that means I go online through Win to the Billings Gazette. I use Win so I can hear the articles. I scan through the pages to find articles I want to read and then click on the article. I have a few other websites bookmarked so I can easily go and do my daily readings. 
I use Win to read my emails and write emails. I just copy and paste between programs. I write using the word prediction, and I can listen to what I have written to see if it is what I want. I don't have to check for spelling often with word prediction. Win is what I'm using right now to speak. I don't usually use it for speeches, as it is difficult to get it to stop where you want. I do sometimes use it for conference calls, if my responses are written, and I don't want to move it into the ego. Okay. He wanted you to get to see when. Ha! Who knew we'd use it for the whole speech? Do we want to display it? Or do you want to put... Well, it's up to you. I mean, you can put it on, and they could see the screen, yeah. You can plug it in quick. Okay. Or, yeah, the camera would be faster to turn, but... Let's just do it. Alright. That work? Okay. That All works right. so much better. It's not on your face, huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can hear it now. You can sort of see it. Lastly, I have always been lucky to communicate what I wanted assistive technology to do. Some people well, thought it was annoying how I would always tell her what I liked and did not like about my technology, what it did, and what I still needed it to do. We have learned that this is one of my most important advocacy skills. My opinion of how my tools work has always been important in what drove decisions. If you are working with someone who needs to use technology, listen to what they say they need the technology to do, what is working for them, and what is not. They're the ones who have to use the tool. What they want it to do has to be most important. As you can see, assistive technology is really important to me. I can talk for a long time about tools. Good thing. When Bronwyn and I were first emailing about this speech, she wanted me to speak for 60 minutes. That is twice as long as I had ever spoken. We negotiated it back down to around 30 minutes, but then I had to do a question and answer period. I think I'd better get back to my speech. I had started to talk about advocacy. I don't think of myself as an advocate. I think it is just something that happens when you are a person with a disability. Kind of a survival skill for all my life. People have put me in situations or environments because I have a disability that other people without disabilities would not find acceptable. Things started right away in first grade. The bus would pick me up in the morning and take me to school. They would let me drive into the school and then disconnect my wheels. I was supposed to sit inside and wait for my aide to come. The other kids were outside on the playground running and playing. It took me a couple weeks to explain to mom what was happening when I got to school. It is not a good thing for school when mom is mad. She explained they were to never touch my chair. The important skill I learned was that I had to tell someone when I was being treated differently. I had to learn it was not okay that it was wrong. First grade was a long year. Things happened often. I had to learn to speak up for myself say what I did not like, what I thought was wrong. I did not have to fix it. I just had to be able to tell mom what was not working. She would come and tell them what had to change. By the time I had to move schools in fifth and sixth grade, I not only was to identify what worked and didn't work, I was to suggest what a solution might be, how I wanted things. When I was in sixth grade, I had a great teacher she treated me just like her other students. She expected me to do the same work and to have the same rewards. She would question why things were to be different for me and helped me to expect to be treated the same. I had never been on honor roll. I had an IEP. She saw this was a disappointment to me. She asked the principal why I could not be on honor roll. She made them define what I would have to do and why it was different. For the rest of my academic career, I was on honor roll. Advocating for what was right was just part of my daily life. 
When I was a sophomore in high school, I ran into a problem that was bigger than the day-to-day -day issues. I'm a special Olympic athlete. Our team had started practicing at the community track, just like we had every spring for summer games competition. There had been a big fundraiser in the community to resurface the track. We had only practiced one sort twice when I was approached at school and told that my wheelchair could not be on the track. They said it would damage the surface. I was upset and did not think that it was right. When I got home, I told mom, she is also my special Olympic coach. We sent an email to Disability Rights Montana to see if it was right to keep me off the track. They agreed it was right. They sent a letter to the school district to try and help me. The school board voted to keep me off the track. Disability Rights Montana said they would help me, but I would have to file a complaint with the Montana Human Rights Commission. Mom said it was my decision. I was almost a young adult and I would have to learn to make these tough decisions. Mom expected this from me just like the rest of my siblings. She said you better practice standing on your own while you are still at home. I decided we needed to file a complaint. Being kept off the track was right. For the rest of that year I could not practice at the track. I would sit on the side and support my team. It was hard. People at school who had told me no were mad. Things were written in the paper that hurt. I just kept going. In May, just before Relay for Life, we were told by the Human Rights Commission that the school district could not keep wheelchairs off the track. I went to the opening ceremonies for Relay for Life and knew every wheelchair on the track was there because I had said this is right. To me, things are just an issue of right and right. You can choose to address the problem or ignore it. I don't understand when people choose to ignore it. Then the problem just waits for someone else to address it, say it is right. It feels good to make change happen. Now when things happen, I know I have the right to ask for it to be changed. Sometimes it is just telling people. Sometimes it is writing a letter. And sometimes you have to get legal help. But if you do not help yourself, who will? Timed my speech. Still not enough. Note to self. Remember not to sign up to speak for more than 30 minutes. It is hard to write this much. Second note. I have discovered it is a bad idea to let people record your presentations. You have to write a new speech. You can't use old ones over. Rats. So what haven't I talked about? Leadership was the last time I was to cover. I think advocacy and leadership are tied together. I also think leadership is part of what I do for work. When I graduated high school, people were worried I would have nothing to do all day. I wasn't really worried about it. The weather was just getting nice, and I liked to have my gardens planted by the end of May. I could spend all summer out in my gardens all day. Then also in summer is baseball. My little brother plays on the local team. I go to every home game and most of the away games. So to me, I had nothing to worry about until fall. Summer barely got started, and my friend June Hermanson from the Montana Youth Leadership Forum, Mild called in wanted me to meet her in Billings to talk about a job. I went and met June. She wanted me to be a regular for Mild in Eastern Montana. I decided it would be a job. It didn't sound too hard. Just go and speak at schools in Eastern Montana about Mild. I would travel a little in the fall and get paid to speak. MILF is a summer program for youth with disabilities. About 20 youth meet for a week in Helena to learn about leadership, advocacy, and what they want to do with their life after high school. I would help youth in eastern Montana apply to go. I also still had a job with the Montana Transition Training and Information Center, MTN-DIRC. I attend meetings, give web-based presentations, and sometimes write an article for the newsletter. That reminds me I have to write an article this month. Also, I hope you are taking I pictures. Know, well, sorry. I will need them for a meeting on the 9th. One of the focuses of MT Turk is to highlight emerging leaders. I'm on that work group. 
Mm. We've published stories about young adults who are working, playing, or living right along people without disabilities. We show how they are successful so that we can inspire others to do the same. Some of the articles and presentations I have done are on alternatives to guardianship. When I turned 18, I wanted to keep control of my life, but would need assistance with having my choices heard. With MT Turk and Pluck, we developed tools I could use, so I had help if I needed, but I still made the choices and decisions. My tools have worked well for me, so I wanted others to know there were options. So back to how I'm supposed to be bored. This year out of high school has been great. I like getting to decide how I spend my time and what I do for work. How cool is that? All my time in school I was considered non-verbal. Now I get paid to speak. All my jobs involve my going and speaking to people. Makes you think maybe we should not decide what people can do by what we see on the outside. I never move my lips when I'm giving a speech. I was going to demonstrate this by drinking water while I was speaking. But then I start to laugh and my lovely assistant won't give me a drink. She does not think it is funny when I choke and I can't drink water until I stop laughing. I like getting to go and give speeches. I like to get to travel. This trip is only the second time I have flown. Last time was also here to Denver to speak. I would like to continue to find work as a speaker, but for now it is summer. I can go home and garden and watch baseball. It has been so wet and cold I'm way behind on my planting. Sound like a farmer, don't I? Life is good. Thanks for listening. for a few questions if anybody has or if that's okay Isaac Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have a question? Here. Isaac, I just wanted to know if it would be easier to use text like language quicker on predictability. The problem with T9 is you can't use a keyboard and T9 at the same time. So you either have to know how to use T9 and do it from the front. And Isaac's so used to a keyboard, he likes his keyboard. So he opens the keyboard, which means letter by letter. For texting? Yeah. He's going to bug somebody to come up with an app for that. <laughs> Why don't you make an app for that? <laughs> Thanks. Isaac, um, my name is Gabriela, and I just want to say that I found your speech to be um, highly inspiring. Um, I know many youth um, who would love the opportunity to um, do great things like you're doing, but um, they have not ran across the <laughs> right supports and services to do it. So I, I really admire you for being where you're at and um, I'm just kind of curious to know where you see yourself in a few years, five years from now. <laughs> I think I have a pretty good idea but <laughs> I'll let you answer. Where, where do you see yourself in five years? Hard to say. You're not a big planner for too far ahead. You're kind of stuck on one thing right now, which is gardening. Yeah. I know. Um, we actually, Isaac is really bossy. You would never guess that, but he is like really, really bossy. So he wanted to garden, 
and he, he, in biology, they grew some plants. I could actually stand up, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, weird on the knees. <laughs> they were growing plants, and he, he really enjoyed that. So he wanted to do that at home and bring them home. So we needed something that was up, and being in Miles City, we went to the local Ace Hardware. We got Ace and Walmart and found a horse feeder bunk that Isaac could drive underneath, and we could fill the feeding station with dirt. So we planted that, and we put it outside on the corner where Isaac could drive up, and we happen to have a lot of sidewalk where we live. Well, unfortunately, that inspired Isaac. <laughs> and now we have one, two, three, four, five, six raised bed gardens on our corner on our sidewalk so that he can garden everywhere. <laughs> And, and it's, it's, it's perfect for him. They're up high. He can be out there. And he truly would spend so much time out there. He's also really lucky. As much as he wants to cut down my trees because they shade his garden, <laughs> they also provide shade for when he's out there working. So he has an option to get out of the sun if it actually gets too warm, which we hadn't seen yet. This is a bit of a shock to us. But that's, that is, I don't know in the future, do you want to keep speaking? <laughs> no? <laughs> not, not, not to ask you that right now. <laughs> is it a lot of work? <laughs> yeah? Would you go again? <laughs> would, you, would you do another speech somewhere? Can you tell with that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Great. And there's lots of possibilities in your future for sure. Um, one more question, then we're going to have to go on. I'll try to speak up. Uh, I just wondered, Eric, if you have gone to college or if you have Isaac. About Isaac. Isaac. That's okay. Isaac, if you have gone to college or thought about going to college. Go ahead and tell her. What do you think about school? <laughs> go ahead. Yep, that's the one I thought you'd pick. No, thank you. <laughs> Okay. The school wasn't easy. Um, our local community college, unfortunately he knows that sometimes I go there and work. So um, it would be a significant transition for them also. Let's give Isaac another hand. Thank you so much. <laughs>